All right, welcome back. It is the verdict here on Channels Television, and we'll be having a very robust discussion. We've got a really lively panel uh, mm -hmm. tonight, <laughs> bringing in all sorts, all sides, all types of, uh, uh, of information you need to know. Yeah. For those who have not participated in elections before, you need to know this. You need to hear this. And for those who are contesting and campaigning for the first time, it's a bit too late for this circle. But against 2023, you need to hear some of these facts that have to do with campaign financing. But let me go back. Let's go back to the magic board where Sheung Okibalo is there playing with his favorite toy. Um, <laughs> at Sheung, earlier you alluded to, you talked about it very briefly when you mentioned the demography in terms of occupation. Um, people, you know, housewives, students, and so on. Take us through that and what does that mean? Well, um, Ladi, interesting uh, because, I mean, I've been listening to the conversation and largely uh, we've been looking at how much the cap for the presidential election uh, in truth is one billion. And if you look at it, uh, you wonder how much can that take some of these campaign organizations uh, to get through this period of um, election. It's a, a tumultuous period, if, you talk, if, I, if I can uh, say that, in terms of logistics, how they move from one place to the other, how they cannot move on the road a whole lot of the time, and how they need to hire aircraft that will take the candidates and take. It's a very, very tedious one in terms of how much being spent. But let's take a look at this. Uh, from what we were looking at, uh, the economic effect of some of um, those who are going to be voting, what they are looking at, and the reasons behind some of the figures that we are getting as uh, far as INEC has given us in terms of how many people have, uh, are voting and how many people have been registered, uh, Ijoma and Ladi, I did tell you earlier that look at this. Uh, it's interesting uh, when we see uh, these figures. Uh, if you look at it, the housewives, they have... Um, uh, uh, fourteen percent of uh, the voters, and uh, so fourteen percent of the entire registration are housewives. The followed, you will see, sixteen percent are farmers and uh, fishing. Uh, those in the fishing area, and if you look at it, this will interest you, and perhaps it gives you an understanding of what. Uh, the, the coming days might look like. I told you earlier that we'll find some first-time voters that will make a very strong impact on this election. And if you like, look at it, 26% of the entire voting population are students. 22 million out of the 84 million are students. Ladi, what does that tell you? It tells you that there are young people between the age of 18 and 35 are going to be making a whole lot of difference in this election. So if you look at the issues of vote buying, would they be swayed by those 3,000 Naira, 5,000 Naira, 10,000 Naira in this election? The economists are beside you and giving you a sense of what this means, Ladi. Student, 26% of the registered voter, Ladi. Yeah, but, okay, sorry. Please go uh, I, I, I'm think, I'm just thinking, as you're saying it, I'm thinking that it's quite possible that some of these students, uh, the 22 million, considering that that percentage, a large number of them are probably people in tertiary institutions, particularly in the universities, which have been shut since November the 4th, and they've been more or less at home. And even though ASU has called off the strike, uh, we haven't heard announcements of universities resuming as at yet. Uh, and therefore, many of these students who registered uh, near their schools for the purpose of voting because the election was supposed to take place around the time they would be in session uh, and are now at home, some of them, maybe in schools in Bielsa who live in Kano, are highly unlikely to travel from Kano to Bielsa just for the purpose of voting. Uh, so probably they won't vote. Those who probably will, will do so, unfortunately, with the intention that you indicated there, which is that maybe something might come out of this that will be beneficial to them. That's the way I see it. Ijama, what do you I don't know. What worries me more, you know, in, in, in the past, when you look at these kind of figures, um, it gives you an idea of how many students there are in that particular percentage region. But when you think about how many of that figure 
collected their PVCs. You know, for, in 2019, it's a bit different. You really cannot say, you know, which way it's going to go. But that said, I don't know. I'm, I'm not one to look at statistics and to, uh, to, to <laughs> predict well, because you know what they say about statistics and polls and all that before yeah. the election. But, but, so so I don't trust know. me, trust me, Mr. Rwani there and Mr. Kerry there will tell you that numbers don't lie. And um, for a moment, if you look at this and the impact of this, I did say, uh, look at it, uh, interesting, with this, what this chart will be giving us. So we have students almost reaching the top of the roof the, of the graph. Students have the largest uh, mm -hmm. uh, voting uh, uh, percentage and followed by farmers. And then you have them uh, right there, housewives and fishers and farmers. There you have them in that um, percentage. So uh, it might mean something to politicians. But, of course, we need to also look at it that what husbands will be telling their wives right. on the election day when they're going out, when we have 50% the of them, the housewives, and what farmers uh, will decide who has favored them within the last uh, few months or so, the decision they will make. But, again, the likes of Mr. Rewarning and Mr. Kiari, who are into business, just from 12% of those who are going to, uh, who are registered and artisans. I don't know what is happening these days. It looks so much that artisans are not very much interested uh, in the electoral process. 5% of the entire uh, voting uh, population that we have in Nigeria, of the 84 million and uh, others are just about 7%. Mr. Carey, you have an idea why civil servants are just about 6%. Percent on the day. A lot of people had said, look, what happens is that people register where they work, but they cannot vote on that day because restrictions of movement happen on, uh, on the election day. These are some of the significant effects this will have on this election, Ladi and uh, All right, thank you very much. You know, uh, we're we're going to take the last couple of minutes. I think we have about four minutes or thereabouts uh, to allow our guests to weigh in on some of these stats and what possible impacts they have, especially with the main theme that we discussed. Mr. Kiari, of course, Shio's last question was sure. to you with reference to the issue of business. Uh, students, uh, farmers, uh, artisans, and those kind of groups. I, 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 I think, I think the, the, the numbers are exciting. Um, it basically means that first-time voters plus the students uh, make up a quarter of the 84 million registered right. voters. And that may actually be the significant... Uh, pool of, uh, of, of voters that may affect the results. Mm. Now, the only thing that I don't know is that there is no survey yet on their pulse, meaning um, how has this administration, how has APC government affected their lives in the last mm. three years versus, say, uh, PDP uh, in the States or wherever they're living in, um, because that would have added a lot of value to the statistical analysis, because uh, we, short of that, what we now have is basically a demographic uh, s breakdown of the voters, which in of itself is not the beginning of the excitement. Uh, the excitement <coughs> comes where if there is a poll on what is the approval rating of Mr. President, for example, mm. over the last three and a half years, uh, what is, how is the economy faring? What's their own view of the, how the economy is uh -huh. doing, et cetera, et cetera. If we those have, those, have impact. then we can interlay that, yeah. and then you can kind of make a predictive analysis yeah. of, of how things are. Mr. Now, Mr. because Wendell, we each ask. have, from what I can see, we each have 45 seconds, and we're going to wrap this up. Mr. Wendell, you have the first shot at the 45 seconds. I think I want you to talk about a common man as you're closing, because you've been trying to get that in. Well, I, I think that we, did, we don't have the time. So the truth is that, Anecdotally, they said 1.5 trillion was what was spent in the last election. That's right. What came to my mind was that it's exactly about the same amount that we use for petrol subsidy. And, we, and you look at the petrol subsidy scam. It, if those are the guys that finance the election, because that's where the ripoff comes from. So you, there's, there's a correlation between that kind of structural corruption and political success in this country. I'm going to put you on pause. Uh, Ihema Bibi, what's your view? Um, on this, demo, the, this demography that she was just outlined and what possible impact it will have? 
the with the uh, analysis regarding the students uh, the, the the ability the financial ability of an uh, of a first time voter that's 18 years old and the financial ability of someone who's 34 years uh, quite mm -hmm. wide and i think to lump them together in one in one demographic is a problem in itself mm -hmm. because the an 18 year old voting for the first time excited to be voting does not have the financial capability of someone that's 34. They shouldn't be lumped together. So 45 that... 45 seconds up. Yes. Uh, I have to go to Abuja now and um, Ambassador Humphrey Ojako. 45 seconds. What's your view? Yes, I, I think um, the, the, the real cross for me, this, these figures reveal that the students, that's the young people who are not too young to run, at the same time, are the people who are actually being denied the opportunity to run themselves because of the cost of this uh, election. So without them, the, the schools have closed. The universities have been closed for quite some time. How do those students vote? They are, they, they, they are suffering double jeopardy now. First, they can't even be voted for because of the costs. And now they, they cannot vote. even return to their various uh, places where their schools are located where they registered, obviously, to cast their votes for their preferred candidates. Your 45 seconds are up. Your 45 seconds are up, sir. Election. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. You're a figures man. Yeah, I'm here. You're a figures man. What do you make <laughs> of all okay. this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, 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 I was part of a study um, that we just concluded with a smart card reader recently, two months ago. And it was amazing to find out that in the southern part of the country, the accreditation for the 2015 election was predominantly by students. That is, the student segment was the largest volume of accreditation of voters in the southern part of the country. Well, in the northern part of the country, the largest accreditation farmers. went to the farmers first and then the housewives, mm -hmm. which was shocking to me. So the students, while they are very, very important, I don't think that they are so... Um, the figure is 22 million, it's large, but it, the real voting, you find out that in certain parts of the country, they are not as... Um, as, 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 as you would as expect. The figures show in the real sense. All right, thank you very much. We've completely run out of time, Ijama. We've just got enough yeah, time to. We've just got enough time to give you your parting shot. Uh, one viewer here is saying to you, Ladi, young politicians can use many other mediums for fundraising, so have hope in them. Very good. <laughs> That's very right. Good. Noted. <laughs> Let's thank our guests, uh, uh, Ihema Bibi, Kerry Booker, this back with Wane, Abiodun. Uh, Ajijola and uh, Ambassador Humphrey Ojako. Thank you all very much for joining us for what has been a most exciting discussion today. Yes. Gemma, Daddy, tomorrow, you have the honors. We tomorrow. have two days to go. Um, if you have your PVC, you are going to be going out to vote. Do send us pictures of your PVC. Tell us your location. And we'll do this again tomorrow. tomorrow. Good night. Yeah.